<laughs> All right, we're live. Welcome, Internet. This is Avenel Wing with Double Exposure, and I'm here with Co uh, Kurt Covert from Smirk and Dagger. Hey there. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Abby. Good to see you. Um, we are here tonight to talk about playing games together online using uh, specifically Tabletop Simulator. Um, Kurt has some things he wants to share with us. Kurt, go ahead. Well, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so in the title of this thing, I, uh, I dubbed it a, uh, a bit of a celebration. And uh, I did so because God knows we all need one. <laughs> Um, and also, this is, uh, of course, the grand opening of uh, the Envoy Gateway, and so that deserves a bit of celebration. Um, as do all the people who demo games here. Um, now, some are going to be publishers like me, uh, some are going to be designers, but most of, uh, most of the folks are going to be Envoy Heralds, and these are a group of passionate gamers who just love sharing and teaching games. Um, and that's that's pretty special. And it's really kind of intricately woven into what this industry is all about. Um, we're kind of fortunate in that this is, it's a passion industry. Um, you know, so when, when I get up in the, the morning, I'm not, I'm not making widgets. I, and I'm not really focused on, you know, uh, even making a dollar necessary. Like I, I'm making a Thing. I'm making an experience like this. This is not a product. This is like this is like something to do. It's an experience in a box, and and through demos we get to really understand what is in that box. Um, so I think most people in this industry aren't in it because yeah they they're they're looking to make a buck necessarily. It's not why they started anyway. It's a love of games. It's a passion. And um, so, I mean, even translated over to, to, to my booth when, when I'm at, you know, Gen Con or one of the other shows, um, I have always told my entire team that we actually don't sell games. We don't right. sell in the booth. And at first they all looked at me like, um, aren't we here to sell games? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not why we're here, right? Our job as um, as game demonstrators is to simply showcase the game, showcase the fun, showcase the experience that can be had, um, all the best benefits of this experience we're going to share together. And if you do that well, well, then the games basically sell themselves. Um, all we have right. to do is just kind of point people in the right way after that, you know. So, um, and like everyone who who demos games and i know avi this is probably very true of, of you as well because i know you also uh, get out there and and demo your socks off yes out the shows yes yep <laughs> yeah well so and so i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you also tell me uh your impressions but one of the things that i love about demos and doing them um is first of all it's it's always different um People would, my very first game was like 17 years ago, it was Hex Hex. And I can't tell you how many times I have demoed Hex Hex. And you would think right. after the bajillion times, like I'd be sick of it. But I never am. And that's because the experience of doing a demo, of showcasing a game, is you get to see how that game impacts people. And every single new group you show it to, has that same spark of, oh, they get the aha moments, they get excited, they see all yeah. the different things unfold. Yeah. And I mean, that just fills you with with joy. And that's why I actually get up every day to make games, to, to get that reaction when I do a demo. What is your reaction yeah. then? Uh, Hex Hex is actually a perfect example where you get like three moves around the table and all of a sudden everybody leans in and they go, oh. And you're like, <laughs> and they get it. And yeah. it's just, it is a magical moment where you see their gears start to turn and then all of a sudden they're like, wait, could I? And you're like, yes, you could. Do you yeah. want to? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure that I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> and then the first time someone breaks that seal and gets cutthroat, they're like, now I can. And it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've heard it likened to taking a pregnant hamster into a kindergarten class. 
right? <laughs> What ha- what happens if you take oh, a pregnant yeah, yeah, hamster yeah. into a yes. kindergarten class? Everybody goes home with a hamster. Yes. You put a game on the table. Everybody goes home with the ta- with the game. That's a great analogy. I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, and and that's ob- it's obviously true. I think anyone who has ever demoed a game um, kind of has that same feeling, whether they were the designer or whether they're just like showcasing as part of uh, the the Herald program. Um, yep. And I think a lot of a lot of the reason why live demos work so well is that our passion is contagious. Um, you know, obviously we're demonstrating games that we believe in, that either we had a role in making or designing, developing, um, or honestly, we've kind of taken a little bit of ownership of the game ourselves. Um, because we we in the end we we kind of define ourselves by some of the games we choose and what we love the best and um when we take ownership we just we want to like we just want to kind of share those things with people and you know give them the same kind of great feelings that we got through that same uh that same experience and i think that's like the magic of of a game um this idea about sharing something that is exciting to us and gets other people's ex- uh, other people excited it, it's all about the human connection and you get to be storyteller and host and ringmaster and we create experiences at the table and we get to see the reactions of the people who respond to all that and are inspired by it yep. and that's why we do it it's a huge emotional high And we literally change people's brains, right? I've heard people say, well, it's just a game. And I'm like, no, you are literally changing the structure of your brain by having this experience. Hmm. That's interesting, too. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is that um, the Heralds demo people everywhere. I mean, honest, this is how we introduced new gamers especially to the hobby um and how we grow the hobby overall um so i think it's like the experience is 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 really summed up well with like you know that when people walk up to the booth um or in in a retail store and they're like you know they they see they've got there's a, a demo table out you know people will come up and say like, oh can can you show me this game yeah. and i mean that is the moment that that I love that retailers love like yes I want to show you this game and um and in so doing it's you know very often it's like the first the first time people really you know gravitate and click into a game you know um you'll you'll see you'll see the first time people you know, the first con goer like you have a first con experience like it's intimidating but your way through is to connect with people and have that moment together. And that's why people keep on coming back to conventions. You can go and you can buy games online, right? But you want the human connection. You want to be introduced and shown the the games. Um, and, and so that's why this is such an amazing opportunity that now, sadly, with COVID and all the craziness, we can't. You right. know, it's... Um, I have longed to be at a convention. I can't wait to go back into a store and do a demo. Um, but right now it's really hard. So it why is. I'm why I'm so excited about what's happening here on the Envoy Gateway is once again we are able to start connecting with people virtually. It's not quite the same, but man. I mean, you can have a conversation over the game table. Someone, um, you know, you can you can be taught a game live as as you are playing. That is the best way to learn a game. And if there's a whole calendar of things that maybe you are curious about, here are some really knowledgeable and passionate people who are just can't wait to show you these games. And who have self-selected in, who have right. certified, who have done the work to know these games inside and out. Yeah. And who are just, so just as passionate as I would be even. Yeah. 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 
Um, for people who don't know what we're talking about, Envoy this month has launched the Envoy Gateway, which is a entire portal where you can go and learn about games from Envoy publishers. There is a calendar system that is entirely searchable where you can look for the type of game you want to play. Maybe you want to play a strategy game. Maybe you want to play a social deduction game. You can search uh, by keywords. You can search by publisher. You can search by name. You can search by date and look mm -hmm. and see what's available. Once you're registered, you can actually sign up for a seat. And then you get information on how to find that game online and log in with uh, log in. And a herald has committed to be there to help you learn the game. So it's very much like walking up to them at their local retailer or at a convention and saying, what you got? Uh, can I can I see that? Um, and so I'm really excited because it gives people the opportunity to interact with these games in a, in as close as we can get given the current state of epidemiology. Which is amazing. And, and I think, too, I think um, once... Once uh, retailers get a look at uh, this system, you know, of being able to like, you know, set up an event and invite people to it, um, they're going to do their own little events as well. Because uh, some some of the envoys are either the, the store owners or their employees, and they can set up uh, a time and invite their own clientele in to to try a demo, just like they would do in store. Um, Absolutely. And, yep. And I think you know all of that just gets us doing what we all really want to do and love to do, which is one, play games, but most importantly, share games. It's 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 almost like a, it's a pride point of the hobby. You know, when I buy a game, yeah, I want to play it, but mostly I want to share it. And this is the yep. great opportunity to do that. Um and and I since we're since we're talking about this as a celebration, I just want to take a moment and Thank an ongoing thanks to all the demo folks out there, to the Envoy Heralds, and uh, and and to you too, Avi, uh, uh, Avi oh, and Vinny, you. because you know everyone works so hard to make uh, to make these things work, and and it's all passion, and I appreciate it. So yeah, we have some Heralds hanging out with us in the Twitch chat, and it's really nice. It feels very cozy to have you guys here with us. Yeah. Hey everybody. Um. <laughs> Um, so, so that was kind of just my, my broad up front. Um, I guess the next thing I'm pretty excited about is, um, is the fact that we do have quite a few of our games available that you can play remotely. Um, and, um, the nice thing about some of the builds that we've done, uh, in this case, almost all of ours are in tabletop simulator is that we've been able to, uh, script in um some great demo modes for um for the, the various things that make it easy easy to learn and takes very little setup um so that's something that i think the the heralds are going to appreciate i think it's something that's also going to be really great for fans because it means they're going to speed right through like the how do i play and right into the let's play um so right. that's pretty important too um we've certainly have um have brought in our most recent and coming uh, upcoming games, but we even have a couple uh, from the back catalog too. So, uh, what I thought I would do is I was just going to give a peek at some of those setups. Um, so, maybe we can kind of switch over to the other screen here. I think that's really cool. Um, our tech person is taking care of that for us in the background. Um, yeah. So Amanda says Smirk and Dagger slash Smirk and Laughter is one of mine and Brian's favorite game companies. Um, we've got a couple of other heralds in here. There's also some vying for the giant Tower of Madness to be available <laughs> to retailers to borrow. <laughs> oh my god. Well, so that is um, way heavier uh, and a, a bit of a chore. So be careful what you wish for is all I'll say. <laughs> but it looks amazing. Having helped babysit that thing, yes. Yeah. But it looks amazing um, and it plays great. So I totally hear you. Um, I think right now it resides in Michigan. So Michigan retailers, be, be on notice. <laughs> <laughs> if you see it crawling your way, beware. Yeah. All right, cool. The, um, the new screen is up. 
All right, cool. So um, what you're seeing right now is uh, is actually the game that you may have heard about uh, fairly recently. This is the Night Cage, um, which oddly enough is our very first cooperative game, which I never thought I would hear myself say, being from Smirk and Dagger and 14 years of nonstop backstabbing. Um, but Oh, um, I think the game does plenty of stabbing. No, this is all fully, fully, co- well, the game stabs, but the, the players. <laughs> but um, in in any case, um, it's, uh, it's a horror-themed tile placement game, and you are crawling through the dark trying to escape this endless and ever-changing labyrinth um, of just eternal darkness. Um, and you have to do that together or be all lost together. Um, as I mentioned, one of the nice things here is that it has a demo mode. mode. So uh, a Herald is going to be able to click that button for you and show you everything will just set up. So here I've got all the tiles I need to point to and talk about. Um, I've got like initial areas so that they can quickly show you the cool candlelight mechanic, which is kind of, you know, the center of the game. You know, your candle will light only one tile away down each corridor. Where So you're on a four-way junction, therefore, it's all four cardinal directions, one square away. Um, and then if you're if you move, your light moves with you. You draw and you are able to rotate, connect, and then the tiles that you left behind, one square out of range now, disappear forever into the darkness. And just because it's all set up for you, no one has to fish for anything, and we can get right to the excitement. We can talk about finding your keys and finding the gate and beware of the monsters. And it's just that simple. Um, the game itself is really compelling to play here in this environment. Um, it's, uh, you know, if, if you're doing audio through the through this or through a Discord channel or something like that, I mean, you're right there over top of the board. It's uh, It's been, you know, really well appointed. Uh, you can play both the classic and the advanced game. So maybe maybe there'll be an advanced class as well offered. So, you know, if you've already played the basic game, you learned it, well, now come and learn how to play the advanced mode as well, because we've got both of those available. So that's one example. If I rem- remember correctly, you're teaching it tomorrow at 9 p.m.? Ooh, you accurate? are correct. Yes, and I think there are still seats left. So by all means, there are. By. So uh, there's the question of, will the Night Cage become an Envoy game? I imagine so. But oh, sure um, it will. If... <laughs> the, the deciding factor there is if Kurt sells through the first container, it'll become an Envoy game after that first container <laughs> during the second reprint. Yeah. Because um, kind of we don't want to take games away from the retailers. Yeah. True. Oh, what's this pretty thing, Kurt? Aha. Uh-huh. Well, so this is Cinder. Um, Cinder is also on TTS. Um, and this is a push your luck dice game of um, adventurers who've decided that dating dragons sounds like a lot of fun, um, so long as you don't get burned in the process. Um, But one of the great things about this is you get to choose the profile pick that you would like to have represent you. So you could choose this half-orc, maybe. And then I'll just go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Um, The fun part is now I get to go ahead and give myself a name so let's say i'll be i'll be orky uh by the way the game actually is a dry erase sort of thing so um this is the best you can kind of do uh in tabletop simulator but you just use the pen tool and it's pretty easy you just hit the minus key to adjust the the size now orky orky is gonna like uh mountains but because it takes a long time i'm gonna say moon because it's easier to write (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and just dis- dislikes rain. Okay, there we oh, go. Oh, yeah. No one likes so, to get wet. Indeed. All right. So then, because you set up now your your profile, um, all that part was the thematic fun bit, which people will end up role playing a little bit, like as they start failing their dice rolls. People will say, "Oh man, what what happened at dinner?" Rather than like, "Oh, you misrolled your dice." It was, so you you start actually playing through some of that stuff anyway. But the interesting part is that now this is the mechanical side. So you set up a compatibility. So as it relates to treasure, you're more of a hoarder, an investor, or a spender, and you get to choose one. Well, 
Uh, Orky's a hoarder, and she definitely likes the cold. She considers herself pretty relaxed, has a lifestyle, and definitely socially outgoing. So that's the that's the whole uh, compatibility. And then when you actually start looking for some compatible, interesting dragons to date, maybe Spitfire kind of seemed interesting. Well, live fast, burn bright. That's my motto. If that sounds like your scene, then hit me up and we'll start some fire. Well, so you swipe right, and then now you see they've got a whole compatibility chart as well. And if you are really close, if you're the same uh, on any trait, you get a better die than if you are two way or one away. So those odds constantly change. Um, and you actually even go and choose a location for your date, which tells you what you'll be doing on your date. So here at Dastardly's Famous Maze, um, you're going to brunch as a meetup. And if that goes well, you can roll again for the next step. That's the escape room. and Or you can take it to the next level. Keep on going and try drinks later on. Um, but this is just a um, very much a kind of a, a party style game. It's a dice fest. You're pushing your luck. You're trying to find uh, true love. And one of the things that I that I love about it um, is, you know, and this is not something that's in the rules. It's not something that's on the box, but it's something that people have recognized in the game itself, which is, um, first of all, all the dragons are are gender neutral. Um, they're they're very fluid. And uh, a person will date a dragon and use one pronoun, and another person will date that same dragon a turn later and use a different pronoun, and without blinking an eye. Uh, and we we had a five year old who who came up and sat down and looked at it's like, was this a boy dragon or a girl dragon? I, said, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> so, um, and the other thing is that. Um, you can date and win the way you like to date and win. So if you want to try and find that one true love, you can do that. You can win that way. Uh, if you want to just kind of date a bunch of dragons, you can win that way. Uh, some of the dragons have synergies. You want to date a group of dragons. That works too. All are viable scoring methods uh, that you can win the game with. And people have recognized that and said, wow, they kind of, they find themselves in the game somehow and they, they, it's very it's very welcoming. Uh, so that's one of the things I like about this. That's really fantastic. And I like that even though we're all isolating for safety, you can still bring that to the table and get people involved. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right. Let's take a look at something else here. Um, oh, you know what I want to show you? Um, for, for those people who, um, who already know uh, The Menace Among Us, uh, I've got to show you a very great feature with this. Um, if you've played, uh, and first I should set up what this game is, uh, The Menace Among Us is a, uh, it's a hidden agenda game. Um, it's, it's a game where you're in deep space and your ship is in trouble. You have no energy in the energy. You've got to bring that up and repair them without running out of oxygen and suffocating to death. Um, and I'm of course... so bad at this game. I'm so <laughs> bad at this <laughs> Everyone's going to die, and it's all my fault. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, in, in this game, you know, you, you have an agenda, and um, one of the things that you are, you're either trying to save the ship or destroy the ship, because there are menace players who are trying to bring everything down. Um, but as a game, as a setup, one of the hardest things is that organizing all the cards during setup is probably the hardest part of the game. And once you get it rolling, you are good to go. This yeah. particular simulator will deal all the agendas to, it'll sense how many players are here at the table and deal just that many out. That's amazing. Yep. Then once you have that, he's like, oh, okay, cool. Um, did I, wait a second, did I select myself as a, I did. Okay, there we go. Um, so then, on, there's a button right here on my card that says get cards. I get seven, uh, th I'm sorry, 13 special cards from this agenda. I click that, they are shuffled and placed in front of me right now. Then I deal characters. Three characters, I'm gonna say, cool. I'm gonna choose this one, we'll get rid of these. I get seven new cards from this. Click, now those are over here. I hit the shuffle and I deal myself three cards. 
and I'm basically ready to play. And everyone is doing That's that. That's amazing. It's amazing. It saves so much time. I wish the actual board game could do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then even even here, we've, we've automated the, uh, the score track for you to make that simple. So there's just, there's a lot of interesting, fun tools we've tried to build into all of these to make the play experience as good as we can given the digital environment, since, you know, we are losing something by not being right in front of everybody, at least there are some benefits too. Sure. Uh, we have an audience member asking if you're interested in porting these games to Tabletop. Yeah. So um, the answer is yes. Um, so the first one is going to be the Night Cage, um, and that is just about built, and we will have that ready for the Aw Shucks convention. Uh, because that's oh, cool. all all tabletopia driven, so we will have that available, um, and then we'll start sprinkling in some of the other ones as well. Um, uh, let's see some of the other stuff we've got cooking in here. Um, well, here we go. Uh, this year we also introduced the Deadlies. Um, the Deadlies is also here on Tabletop Simulator and will be on Tabletopia eventually. Um, the Deadlies is this great three to five player light take that fun fest. Um, it's very family weight. Um, and in it, you are, um, you're trying to get rid of all the deadlies from your hand. And they are functionally the, the seven deadly sins. But here, they're all these cute, adorable animals. So gluttony is a pig and, you know, lust is a tomcat and envy is this toad. Um, so they're all just cute and adorable. Um, but they've got these great thematic abilities. Um, I mean, for non-gamers, they can wrap their head around it like it's Uno. You're trying to get rid of your hands as quickly as possible, and people are trying to load you back up. Um, but it's all these cool thematic abilities that make it interesting and um, more fun. Now, this, for example, in the demo mode um, for, uh, for folks who are trying to teach the game, it will show you all the different types of things you can play. So you can play all of one suit, all of one number, or a straight. Cool. Then let's show you all the cards that are possible to encounter in this game. And then let's talk about each of them. And it just goes through so that you can teach the game super easy and you can get right into great let's play. So that's fabulous. This yeah. also seems like one that if somebody's trying to find a game to teach their family, like they're trying to, they normally get together for Halloween or they get together for Columbus Day they could pop into this and teach their family without a lot of needing them to feel like they were very gamerly. No, you're right. Um, this, this is something that you can teach pretty much anybody. Uh, Paul, Paul Saxberg did a great job on the design. Uh, it's very approachable. It's very easy to get into quickly. And of course, every single rule is basically on the cards. So if they, if they ever don't know, they can just look at their hand and say, oh, okay, this is what it does. And it's very simple in that way. Uh, people who are interested in picking up a copy of Deadlies, it's in retail now, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, it, uh, it street dated like the week before COVID blew up. Uh, so during the Gamma nice. Trade Show. Yeah. Um, but yes, it is in stores um, and should be everywhere. Um, yeah, if anybody's store is having a hard time getting a copy, just drop me a line. You all know where to find me. Um, there was also a question about whether or not Tower of Madness would be put up on Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia. And Andy was like, holy crumbs, the physics on that. Well, I think that's the, that's the answer. Holy crumbs. The, um, the answer is Tabletop Simulator does have physics. Um, now, I have not tried to build it. But it is an interesting idea. Um, so if if I get adventurous, I will uh, I will give that a whirl because I'd love to see in your copious spare time. Well, yeah, true, but <laughs> <laughs> but I think it'd be really fun to try to put together, and I'd love to see it. So yeah. Um, other stuff that we've got here, we do have also Nevermore. Oh. So uh, this is a game right now, which, um, quite honestly, we do not have any more copies of. It's not, uh, not available for sale anywhere. But this is really still a way for people 
who love the game, who maybe missed out on the game, can still enjoy the game. And eventually we will reprint it, but we'll probably have to wait till COVID cools down a little bit. Um, a little, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, for those who may not know, this is a great card drafting game. Um, you're doing dastardly things to people trying to, you know, outwit them and pass them junk they don't need for their hand. And um, there's the possibility to lose all your health and turn into a raven, which changes your game state completely. And you are, you're now trying to like bring doom onto others as you try to regain your humanity. And it's loosely based on Poe and how the raven actually became a raven uh, in the first place. So, uh, but just to let you know, uh, Nevermore is here as well. And we You're going to talk about have... games that we've taught hundreds of times. I've probably taught 500 sessions of Nevermore. Uh, yeah. Well, it was part of the uh, it was part of the uh, the track for tournaments as well, which is probably why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the last one that we have available right now um, is uh, before there were stars, um, and I bring this one up because this is another one that not only is I think you know super family friendly. Um, this is a great game that adjusts to anyone who sits down to play it. Uh, old, young, it doesn't matter. Their level of storytelling adjusts to this game. And this game is really telling one minute stories. Um, and they are all based on uh, creation myths. How did we get here? Um, what happened to, to cause the universe to exist? And um, it's all based on these wonderful evocative constellation cards. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So we've got the axe, the skull, the father, the ghost. Well, that certainly lines up. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got these great star pipped dice and you roll them to form the heavens that night. These are the constellations that you see that night. And then you scan the heavens looking for, well, what, what star pattern can I see? Well, I can't see the skull. I need a second one for that, but I, I definitely can see the father. And eventually you'll end up drafting two cards for your story. So let's say round one, I got the arrow, and let's say round two, I got the ghost. And so now chapter one, when I tell my first story for about a minute, chapter one is in the beginning. How did the arrow and the ghost come to explain all we know and see. And you're just like that ancient lore giver of old who's been inspired by the stars is now telling them your story around the campfire. And everyone has their own story and they, they actually you know, uh, control their story and, and no one else can, can shift it or do anything else. All you can do is appreciate the creativity that others display. And therefore it's a very heartwarming game, even for people who are like, oh, I don't know if I'm like a storyteller per se, they end up getting rewarded for something creative they they did, and they walk away from this game just feeling great. And um, this is something that we've even got uh, educational guides for teachers, so both uh, mm -hmm. social studies and English language arts. Um, so um, this is something that uh, actually the Museum of Flight uh, out in Seattle uh, just put together a, um, a NASA-based program that incorporated this into their lesson plan uh, at the planetarium. Um, so it's it's just this great way to engage people and and connect to something that's really human. Um, that's so. really fantastic! Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the fact that um, this gives the opportunity to also for heralds to explore these games in a very low stakes way. Hmm. Like you log in to Tabletop Simulator, you find the game, and you give it a shot, right? It's not like you're going to have to, um, it's not like you're committing to the appearances. It's you, you get a chance to jump in and then when it sucks you in, you can take off running and start pulling other people in with you. Well, and that's true. Yeah. You, you, you can start with just your family and friends. And then if, if it's something that inspires and excites you and you feel compelled to share it. And I think that's, again, that's why we all do it is, is, being able to share it with people and, and igniting their, their passion for gaming. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so hopefully that, hopefully that's true. The other thing too is, um, you know, I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek of something. 
just because you're here watching. Ooh. Um, we've been we've been kind of like starting to talk about this, but the team I mentioned that uh, Hex Heck was my very first game ever, and that was golly, seventeen years ago. Um, it makes me feel so old. <laughs> I know, me too. Um, but um, we now are in development with Hex Hex Dex. And Hex I'm Hex... so excited about this. I've heard from your team bits yep. and pieces about this, and I'm so excited. Hex Hex Dex is a, uh, a game that takes the chaos of uh, Hex Hex, which is essentially almost like a hot potato game with cards. Uh, with it has all kinds of effects when you know when things go badly and you get the hex you know blows up in your face. Oh, I didn't shuffle these apparently. Um, but um, now it is a deck builder, and as such, the deck builder allows you to customize what you're going to be doing in order to uh, to actually create your deck and 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 win. Um, so it has a a craft and a spell level. This is how you buy the card, and this is how you pay for other new cards. And you can actually, unlike other drafting games where you know you have to you buy the card and you end up having to discard it and use it when it comes back, you can buy it on the fly and use it immediately, um, which creates a lot of really interesting situations. Um, right it ends up adding so much strategy to what essentially was a game of almost pure chaos. Um, so um, I think we're, I think we're really pretty excited about it and um, we'll be starting to show this and doing play tests um, here on the gateway as well. Yep. I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up because um, as, uh, as Gil was talking about yesterday, um, the gateway also provides an opportunity to actually do play testing of new games before they even come out, uh, to meet with designers, publishers, and um, and kind of put games through their paces, um, and they'll be, I'm sure, through you know, various stages of completion. Um, I think before I put it out on the on the gateway, it'd be a a hard beta <laughs> uh, rather than something I'm just kind of like you know dipping my toe in, but. Um, <laughs> But you, I'm sure you'll find all different types, and I'm sure people will let you yeah. know what state that that game is in when you when you jump in. But I guess the point is that um, the gateway creates a whole bunch of new opportunities for for gaming fans, for retailers, for publishers, for demo people, for designers, everybody. And it's um, it's an exciting reaction to a tough time, and I think. Um, it's really going to benefit us all and probably be here well after COVID because I think, you know, learning games from our homes uh, is going to be something that we're going to want to continue to do. So anyway, we can kind um, of go back to I, our other cameras here. <laughs> um, I will say that, so the gateway is much like Envoy was inspired in many ways by cumulative experiences. And we were at a Gen Con and Vinny and I looked at each other and went, there's a thing missing yeah. um, during Gen Con Online, which was so surreal because we launched people right. off to go play games and then we sat in our uh, living room staring at each other. Um, and we were like, huh, this is lonely. Uh, and so the gateway idea evolved during Gen Con where we were like, there, there are technology out there that makes it possible for us to fix this sitting by ourselves, like feeling disconnected from our community. Um, and we were kind of poking around at it and starting to wiggle some levers and start to test a few things. And it was really putting it on the table with you where you were like, I get it. That we were like, oh, okay. Barking up a tree that needs to be barked up. And so thank you for that. Your enthusiasm really, like, because it was so many fiddly bits, right? It's like game design. It's like software development. Every time we turned around, we poked something and it fell over or it didn't work quite the way we expected it to. Um, and so having some of our publishers really just lit up and you were the first of the pack that were like, I'm going to tell you why this matters. And we were like, okay, like, yeah. 
Awesome. We, well, we now are fueled to continue the next week of knocking things over every time we touch it. Well, and I remember that moment too, because um, when when you had first uh, approached me with the idea of Envoy overall, I was I was already understanding that I couldn't be in enough places, uh, nor could my team. Um, and you know, I hadn't been to a lot of the the conventions throughout the country just because they were just too far away, or there are too many of them. Um, yeah. So at one point, I was about I was about to like look at should I do a summer long tour hitting as many conventions and stores on the way as I possibly could? Um, and I started doing the, the, the costing and, you know, how much time it would take and how effective I could really be and how all those, how the timing would all work out. And as I was right. contemplating that and just overwhelmed with the sheer number of opportunities that I wanted to take advantage of, I still realized I was only going to scratch the surface. And so when you guys said, well, this is going to be an opportunity for us to be at all of those places and to have your games represented and shown by people who, who are passionate about them and know them well. And uh, God, that's yes. And, and, and can we do this too? <laughs> so. So. I'm I'm excited that this is kind of our next evolution. And I think you're right that it will continue to grow and evolve even once we're able to be face to face because it just it eliminates time zones. It eliminates I have kids so I can't get to the conventions this year. It eliminates I lost my job and I'm rebuilding from that and I can't travel. It puts the convention experience and the shared excitement over gaming together in everybody's hands. It no longer becomes a thing where you have to travel or you have to step outside of your real life in order to partake. And I'm, I'm really excited about the fact that it lowers a bunch of barriers. And especially as we branch out into other uh, platforms and there's different levels of being able to be involved. I'm really excited about being able to connect people very, very much real time, right? You can pop into the gateway at any time, see what's running today, see what still has seats available, sign up for notifications. So maybe you can't commit yet, but you sign up and say, I'm interested. And you get an email an hour before from the system saying, hey, there's an event happening tonight. And you go, oh yeah, I can totally make that. Things worked out. I'm done with work. I can go play this. And it, it is really designed to make it as easy as possible to stay connected in a way that even if you're at a convention, you might space out and forget, but with the gateway, your phone's going to be like, hey, did you actually want to go play this game now? Right. And and above and beyond, like, play the game, you can, like, you can be exposed to a new game and be taught by someone who knows the game and, and isn't going to be, like, stumbling, like, oh, let me, I don't know what the, like, we've, we've all been there trying to, like, crack through a game that we haven't fully digested. And, you know, man, when, when you can just, like, look through all these different options th through the given month and say, you know what, I've been thinking about that game. That's cool. It's, it's actually here. Cool. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to give this a, a try, and now it's going to be taught live. I get to do a full playthrough. It's like it's the best of all worlds, and uh, that's honestly that's what I that's what really excites me is um, and th and this tool like I I know because I tried to set something up where I was trying to organize events like this, but there was no tool for actually right. seating a particular event and having those seats fill and have a way to communicate back and forth with people. Um, so this is just, it's a godsend, I think, to, to me. And I think it's something that uh, gamers are going to absolutely love. And uh, so, man, I invite everyone to just like click on the calendar after this and just take a look at an event and try it. Because once you do, you're going to be back like weekly. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, again, Kurt is running the Night Cage tomorrow night. Uh, so if you want to dip your toes in with one of the most charming GMs that is registered through the system, you can jump in there. Um, but we have events happening every single day this month. Uh, we've Next month is already starting to fill up. If you get to the calendar and it's completely overwhelming just because there's so much going on, 
Um, we're also broadcasting each event over on Twitter. So you can get like little sound bite. Oh, this is happening and it looks beautiful. Let me go click in. So we're trying to make sure that there's a bunch of ways to engage. Um, and honestly, you can also start keeping an eye out for your favorite game masters. So if you go and play a game with somebody and you really like playing with them, you can go and see what else they're running this month. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was an accidental benefit where I was like, oh, I didn't know he knew both games. I might go play in the second one. Um, yeah. and that just the, the fact that there are so many ways to dip your toes in and, um, the other thing is that coming later this month, we're going to have training videos for the various softwares where we've, we've collected like a tabletop simulator how to. So if mm. you're a little shaky on how to get in or how to interact with it, um, we're working on Tabletopia, we're working on Yucata. Um, and then because Metatopia is coming up, which is our game design festival, and we're doing a ton of work to use Discord to build community over there. We're going to have videos for how to interact with Discord. So if you get to the gateway and you're like, this is calling for a bunch of technology that I'm not entirely comfortable with, mm -hmm. we're going to work on helping you get onboarded and connected with it. So not only when you get there, will you have a game master that can talk you through the specifics of Tabletop Simulator. Don't hit the flip the table button. It actually works. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, I was three quarters of the way through a playtest with Kurt when I went, what? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I've not recovered from the trauma. Um, but that's why the Heralds are there, is because we've made those stupid mistakes already. We'll make sure that you don't. Um, and so there's, there's the benefit of, yeah, some of this technology is a little new, and uh, some of it can be very uh, intense or even fiddly. But with the scripting and the things that you've done and with having someone there that can be like, hold on, let me, I'll, I'll deal the cards because that deck's a little fussy. You don't need to be entirely competent yeah. with the fact that uh, the early aughts called and asked for their interfaces back. Like, that's just a reality on some of these systems is that we're used to some, we're used to apps on our phone, which don't have to account for interacting with other humans and other people mm -hmm. interacting with board states. Yeah. And, and having the heralds there to help for me is absolutely priceless. Right. And and quite honestly, to that point, um, you, you might come on and never been on tabletop simulator before. Um, and through the process of learning the game, that that envoy is going to be able to like give you a little bit of confidence. So if you wanted to go try something else on tabletop, you're going to be that much better off because you got your feet wet with someone who was there to say, oh, that's simple. Here, here's what you do in order to, uh, to flip a card or whatever. And that's great. Yeah. So, Yep. Having a tour guide is was so, so valuable yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, so we had someone ask if all the Smirk and Dagger games are public on Tabletop Simulator or do they need mm -hmm. a link? So, They're all public? Uh, well, right now... Uh, right now, no. Uh, right now, they are all um, they're all um, hidden, which simply means that they're they're there, they're public, but you need the link in order to get to them. Um, but that said, um, all of these events, um, so long as the you know the, the the envoy has access to that link, anyone can come in and play them. So that's that's not a problem. Uh, we will probably make. Um, a, a good number of them available publicly um, eventually. But we honestly, the reason why we kept them hidden was because we were still developing them. Um, and the other thing was that um, we wanted our events at Gen Con and Aw Shucks to feel special. Uh, so we wanted to show the games to you in this environment. And uh, and and here the, the envoys are able to do that too. Um, but eventually, yes, we will we will make them publicly available as well. Uh, so that brings up two things. One, if you're a herald and you're trying to find the games because you want to run them, uh, Virginia has a big list of games and you can reach out to us to get that information. We will connect you with the information if you're a herald who wants to put it on your calendar. If you are a player who has joined us and want to play something, register for the for the gateway, I will talk to Vinny and make sure that we add a looking for game option so that people can put in a request. And then I will connect Harold that 
uh, are certified in a game with the request and see if we can get onto the calendar for you. Yeah, I know that's, that's right. in our like features request, but it's a good point that we should have that up faster than slower. Um, cool. So Amanda says, I'm looking forward to certifying in a number of these games so, so she can run them. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Right. So audience members, we're at 10 minutes till. Do you have any questions for us that you haven't already shouted out or anything that you want to talk to Kurt about while we have him? And while they think about that, um, mm. where can people who are looking to buy these games, buy these games? Well, first of all, you can go to your local retailer. Um, uh, a lot of them are selling games online. A lot of the curbside, um, some are actually open, um, uh, with, with mask rules and things. Um, so you can certainly, ch uh, check your local shop. Um, and of course, uh, we have them available on smirkanddagger.com as well. Um, so, um, Either of those two things are a good starting point. Okay. Um, while I'm waiting for the lag to catch up and people to ask us questions, where can people find you on social media? Oh, um, so the easiest thing uh, is probably on Facebook, um, Smirk and Dagger uh, on Facebook. Um, and that's the one I actually monitor quite a bit. Um, I'm, I'm at Smirk and Dagger on Twitter as well, uh, you know, and... Uh, I'm 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 not great at content. Emily's good at that, but um, but I, I I do check and and respond to a lot of things out there. So good. Um, but yeah, F Facebook is probably the, the easiest way um, to to get a hold of us. Yeah. Uh, so we have a question. I got here late. Are there Smirk and Dagger games on Tabletopia or Board Game Arena? And the answer was um, they're working on Tabletopia. Yeah, there's uh, the the Night Cage is about to launch um, probably in the next two days. Um, that'll be in preparation for Aw Shucks, uh, which is basically all Tabletopia all the time. Um, and then we've got six games available currently on Tabletop Simulator. We are going to have more on Tabletopia eventually, um, but we just haven't had the opportunity to do so yet. Um, Game Arena is probably not going to be one that we focus on, though. Okay. Um, and then there's there is some conversation happening about getting a game of Nevermore and a, ta a game of Menace Among Us set up for people to go and play, which is awesome. Uh, Nevermore is um, on the calendar, I know. Um, yep. And Menace, you know, what? I, I'll go ahead and put Menace on uh, to get done. So I'll I'll choose a I'll choose a, a time. Awesome. Um, cool. Is there anything else that you want to share with people that you haven't hit yet? No, I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, other than, um, you know, if, if you want to come and play with us, uh, during, uh, shocks, uh, we will be doing, uh, demos there. Um, we are going to, I am going to be on, on here. I'm going to, you're going to see some of, some of my events pop up on the calendar for the gateway as well, uh, including the one tomorrow. Um, and um, by the way, if people were interested in Night Cage but hadn't had a chance to to get on board uh, with the Kickstarter, that is still uh, in late pledges through uh, through the nineteenth of this month. So you've got a, another week and a half or so. Uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, uh, thank you so much for taking your time um, and hang well, out. With we us. have we have a couple more questions. Oh, more Hold questions. Uh, tell us about your worst Cinder date. <laughs> That's a great uh, one. That is a great one. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think now. I don't, hold on a second. Okay. So um, uh, I don't know if you can. So this is uh, Oniri. Yeah. Um, and uh, Oniri describes himself as a dragon who is very fleeting. Um, Yes, they're absolutely fabulous, but hopefully you can handle the fact that our relationship may be as fleeting. Um, so I, I had, um, I was actually like almost a dead match. Um, I had like three green dice and a blue. Like there was almost no way for me to to screw up my roll. Um, and, and yet, and yet, because like like it, it was just the meetup, the very first date I rolled. And it was four flames, 
right in a row. And people, I forget what location I was at, but um, it the the, the line, some someone yeah, I just looked at my dice and I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and someone le leaned over and was like, um. So you can't jump to discussions of marriage on coffee. That's a bad, that's no. You scared, scared Oniri away. <laughs> so. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, there was a question about Metatopia. You're going to be on a panel, maybe? Uh, yeah, I think I, I'm going to be on one or two panels. Um, uh, I know I'm going to be talking... Um, one about uh, perfecting um, designer pitches. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm also going to be talking. Um, oh, what was that? I know we haven't nailed all of this down yet. We so. haven't really yet. No, there's a, there's another one that is, I think, more about uh, the, the, the narrative, uh, the, the, uh, the dramatic arc of a game. Um, not necessarily in a storytelling game, but just how to apply the same principles uh, to to uh, game design. So, um, so yeah, they'll be talking about things like that. And so of we'll people be... can find information about that on the Facebook page, I assume. I well, I haven't posted anything about it yet. So, but yes, but when, once 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 you have that information, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and we'll probably be. Um, We'll probably be doing some playtesting of hex hex decks there as well. So awesome! Um, for that is another way that the gateway is going to be really useful. Is if you register for the gateway and you re and register for Metatopia, you'll have access to the special calendars that will be Metatopia exclusive, full of Metatopia playtests. So that is a thing for people to keep in mind. And the, the gateway is free, so why get, not? <laughs> it, is, it is absolutely free. Um, and then the last question we got was, is there a Smirk and Dagger Discord? I'm going to guess probably not. There is. Oh, there is? Oh, cool. Tell us yeah. about it. Uh, well, it's it's not very exciting. Um, it is, uh, we, we now have a, a Discord uh, thing for Smirk and Dagger. We opened it for, uh, for Gen Con, quite honestly. Um, and um, I can, I can, we can attach the, the link down, down below, I guess. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's text and, and audio rooms where we, where we actually, if you come play a demo with us, that's basically where we'll, we'll meet and then move over to tabletop simulator or tabletopia afterwards. Um, so, so I'm going to posit that Facebook is still a better place if somebody wants to have a conversation with you about what you're. Please. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I am not, I am not that dude yet. Um, I, <laughs> My my I love sons, that it, I love that it's yet. <laughs> well, it has to be because you know we all have to adapt. But right now, uh, someone did actually try try to have a conversation with me recently and said, "Did you see my message in Discord?" I was like, "Message in Discord? Where? <laughs> How? Yeah, I'm. It's not in the mouse. I promise. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no. That's that I, I don't monitor that area. I, I use it just for events right now. So we're we're still growing Kurt's online capacity. You saw his face when I asked about Twitter. <laughs> slowly, slowly I'll get there. It's all good. Uh someone tried to get me to add both Discord and Slack at the same time and I wept. <laughs> yeah. Actually I'm doing Slack now too, which is great. Uh we're we're doing whole kind of team conversations and it's it's delightful. Fantastic. So, inch by all inch. Right. Kurt, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, as always, for your enthusiasm for everything industry related, everything gaming related. You really are a shining light. Uh, well, thanks so much. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, I appreciate you taking the time. And um, hopefully we will see you on the gateway. Yeah, let's play some games together, people. <laughs>